And I will say, I have never had more fun in my entire banking career as I'm having right now. And part of it is working for Happy State Bank and, and uh, laughing and having fun, but also being able to put together an organization that represents the values that I hold, hold dear to me. And that is family first, community, and, and my job. And uh, the folks that we've associated with at the bank all feel the same way. Welcome everyone to LoneStarVarsity.com. I am Zach Long with George Watson. We call this little journey Happy State Bank Football Fever, an inside look at high school football on the South Plains. And George Watson, I think we all survived week zero and uh, some good games out there. Yeah, survive I think is, is the appropriate word. I think we survived it. I think uh, all the teams out there survived it. Uh, some, some really good games, some really interesting uh, outcomes and, and, should, and set some things up I think for a, a pretty good week one this week. And let's go ahead and pour into a little bit of a review of that first week, kindly named Week Zero for some odd reason, George. <laughs> but there were some surprises in Week Zero, and a couple of them you're going to key on here. Let's start first, the Coronado defense. Yeah, the Coronado defense I thought played outstanding. Uh, you know, it's, it's really been kind of their downfall the last few years. You know, they've given up a lot of yards. They've given up, you know, not they haven't gotten many turnovers. It's really been a struggle defensively for those guys. And, you know, offensively they've had, they've had the talent, but defensively they just haven't been able to get it figured out. But, you know, they've got a new defensive coordinator. They've got, and they've got a lot of guys playing both ways too. They've got a really small roster. And those guys really came out and, and were on fire at the first of the game. They got three turnovers from Monterey, the first three uh, drives of the football game, convert them into points, and all of a sudden you're up 20 22 nothing, and, and things were looking really good. Then they kind of had to hold on because of all those guys playing both ways, getting a little gas. But credit that defense. They only allowed 165 yards to a very good Monterey offense, got three turnovers. That's the way you want to start a football season right there. You know, and there was quite a few of us up in uh, Dallas covering the Texas Tech game, yeah. took away some of our high school coverage. But we were looking at our phones during that game going, come on, <laughs> this, this phone is obviously broken. This is ain't not, right. It yeah. is not 22 nothing. And <laughs> we're going to continue on with that game for surprise number two, George, the yeah. Monterey offensive line. Yeah, I think part of that, uh, the reason Monterey or Coronado's defense did play so well is because they really dominated up front against Monterey's offensive line, which, you know, with that running game and, and those running backs has really been their strength. Yeah, they had to replace some guys from last year, some really key guys that, that really kind of solidified that line. You know, but they had quality guys up there coming back and they had some newcomers that I know Coach Pearson was really excited about. They just didn't perform very well. You know, Trayvon Benton had 60 yards. I think Vincent Johnson had around 37, 40 yards. So they didn't really run the football that well. And, and because of that, Coronado didn't have to respect the pass either. So yeah, the dominance, uh, it, the, the way that uh, Monterey's offensive line was dominated, I know probably didn't sit very well with Todd Pearson. And I know he's probably made that an intense focus this week in practice. And the third surprise of week zero, George, another one of those, hey, my cell phone's not working moments. <laughs> Friendship's offense against El Paso Canatillo. Yeah, uh, you know, I talked with Brad Davis uh, this morning, and you know, he talked about it. He, he gave a lot of credit to Canatillo's defense, said they have two really good inside linebackers that played really well. Plus, they came out in a 3-4 defense, which Friendship hadn't seen from Canatillo all, you know, on film or anything right. they saw last year. So it took them a while to get going offensively. You know, and he said they had a couple of touchdowns that were called back or, or that, uh, that could have gone in. One was from a bad snap. I think one was from a penalty. They could have expanded it out a little bit in the second half but really to only get 14 points out of that uh, out of that offense with the way you know that Trevor Uhlenbach threw the ball last year for Artesia with some of the running backs I saw uh, you know I, I think it was a little surprising that no credit you know uh, one of uh, Friendship's offensive linemen was, was hurt. He didn't play, probably won't play this week against Permian, so they only have one returning starter up there. But I think they'll get it figured out, and I would be surprised if they sputtered again like they did uh, against Canatillo. Speaking of things that probably aren't a surprise, we look at the Week 0 top performances. Not a shock when you picked out the ones that you yeah. did here, and we'll start first with the young man we featured last week, Jarek Black from Shallow Water. Yeah, we knew uh, going up to, uh, to Muleshoe for Shallow Water, it, it was going to be a tough deal for Muleshoe to stop him and they really did. I mean, he only he had what 17, 19 carries, uh, 214 yards, four touchdowns. Yardage wise, maybe a little, maybe a little under his average from last year. Uh, unbelievably, yes. Yeah, unbelievable. You know, because his average.
averaging 288, 290, you know, before he got hurt. But I'm sure he'll pick that up. But he did get in the end zone four times. So, yeah, he picked up pretty much where he left off last, last year. Second performance you're going to point out here for us, Georgia Brownfield team. We told you to kind of keep an eye on mm -hmm. this season. Their quarterback, Shacoby Hill, good week one. Yeah, we talked about Shacoby Hill last week, one of the top 100 juniors listed by David Campbell's Texas football, and we saw why, uh, saw why. he threw for uh, 111 yards, a couple touchdowns, uh, or I'm sorry, he ran for 111 yards and two touchdowns, threw for 249 yards and two more touchdowns. Just an incredible dual threat quarterback in their win uh, for Brownfield, and, and I think that's just going to be indicative of what he's capable of the rest of the year. I think we're going to see stats like that from Shacoby Hill all year long. George, our third performance comes from the Rawls Sudan game, which to me was one of the biggest shocks. <laughs> Sudan was a yeah. playoff team last year. Yeah. Rawls drilled them and probably heavily due to their running back, Caleb Reese. Absolutely. Caleb Reese, one of the best outstanding talents here on the South Plains, both offensively and defensively. Uh, you know, solid running back, 248 yards, three touchdowns against Sudan. You know, Sudan had some, some holes to fill, but they, you know, they had quite a few coming back that I thought they would play better defensively, but maybe it was Rawls' offense. I mean, Rawls, you know, with him and with their offensive line, they've got a couple of three guys back. Back that, that played last year, and, and so it looks like they also picked up where they left off, and it could be a special year for Rawls and, and Caleb Reese as well. There are the highlights and lowlights, I guess, of week <laughs> one in high school football, and that leads right into our AJ Media Top 5. And George, because of that Monterey, Monterey Coronado game, we have a little yeah. bit of movement in our top five. Yeah, a little bit of movement. Uh, Monterey moves out from the from the number three or from the number two spot, excuse me, and New Deal moves in at number five. Uh, you know, we, we I thought they were right on the cusp when we had them at number six last year or, or last week. And you know they went out and they proved uh, how good a team they could really be. They went out and absolutely throttled a good Spring Lake Earth team, 42 to seven. Uh, you know, four. You know, like we talked about, their four running backs. All of them, you know, got significant carries. A couple of them approached 100 yards. They were really balanced. You know, ran up a lot of yards offense and played well defensively. So yeah, an all-around great effort by New Deal. That's why they move into the top five. Starting to look like the old uh, Ron Mayo teams that we're used to seeing yeah. out of the New Deal Lions. Absolutely. And that's going to parlay right into our happy State Bank Players of the Week, George, on both sides. Let's start with our female athlete of the week, Megan Allen from Cooper Volleyball. Yeah, what an incredible story. Megan Allen, you know, talking with Coach Pesterfield and with Megan, uh, you know, this week. Just an incredible story. Here's a girl who, who tore the ACL in her right knee. Uh, you know, after her freshman year, in, in, in the spring of her freshman year, missed her whole sophomore year, came back, played well her junior year, and then, you know, in the spring, uh, tore the ACL in her right knee. Well, you know, she was getting looks for colleges, but she also was, was going to be their, one of their best players because they only had two seniors coming back. She had a tough decision to make, and she decided to say, hey, let's put a brace on it. I can't hurt it anymore. I'm going to play my senior year, and she's just done outstanding, had an outstanding tournament uh, at, the, at the friendship tournament with, you know, with almost 60 kills, uh, you know, was just all over the place. She plays middle blocker and outside hitter for Cooper, and just an inspirational story. And the, fa and the fact is that she is now really debating whether she wants to play in college or, you know, being, you know, having this – had this injury happen on both knees if she if college if volleyball is really right for her or if she's just wanting to concentrate on on the next part of her life so here's a girl that's not only you know gifted physically you know, with a lot of talent but really has her head on straight and that is very encouraging to see from today's youth I think and speaking of coming back from injury, yeah. our happy State Bank Male Athlete of the Week, really nice to see here Robert Johnson from Estacado Football. Yeah, very nice to see uh, Robert Johnson got 260-some-odd uh, yards, uh, three touchdowns in, in their win over, Herf over a Hereford team, a 4A team. That's, that's a pretty good football team. And, and uh, you know, Coach Danny Cervantes just couldn't stop raving about how the running game, especially the offensive line, played. But, yeah, good to see Robert Johnson come back. Here's another kid that, you know, is, is one of the better kids both – off the field and on the field, uh, you know, that we have here in the South Plains. I know it was devastating for him to have to go through this injury. He came back, ran a little track at the end of the spring last year. You know, but, but Coach Cervantes has said, you know, he, he was a little timid in preseason practices and in the scrimmages, kind of testing that knee. But apparently you turn the Friday night lights on and, and Robert Johnson goes to work because he didn't show any timidness, timidness at all. He went out there and, and mowed straight through Hereford and looks like he's well on his way to another outstanding season. And definitely, kids, you can't help but maybe rooting for a little Absolutely. to have a great senior Absolutely. season. There is a look at the past. Let's go to the present, George, and take a look at what they call officially week one in high school football in Texas. Let's look at our top picks for the week. We'll start with 
the ever-present sneaky Coronado Mustangs, <laughs> they, they play Lubbock High in a little crosstown battle. Yeah, how, how big would it be for Coronado to be 2-0 and after, uh, after two weeks of the season? But that's you know, really, I think, where they're going to be. Uh, you know, watching them play defense and the way they played against Monterey, the athletes they have on offense and being able to run the, ball, uh, run the football. And then Lubbock High struggles. And you know, I think you know, if, if, if somebody had handed Jason Strunk a box of nails, he would have spit them all out after yes. that game on, on, on Friday. He was, he was hopping mad after that game. And I know he's probably gotten into his team a little bit and gotten them focused and gotten their attention. I just don't know if athletically and, and defensively they're going to be able to hang with Coronado. I think it's probably a close game, but I think in the end Coronado wins this one. George Monterey, they're going to try to get back on track at Odessa. Yeah, you mentioned it earlier, you know, that, that, that Todd Pearson has probably been uh, really into his guys as well, uh, really in their ear, you know, yelling and, and, and getting them focused this week. They go to an Odessa team that, you know, that, that they beat last year, that they really should beat again this year. It's two pretty equal teams. Uh, you know, being on the road, there's a little trepidation in there, but I'm going to go with Monterey. I think it's probably about a 20 to 17 game, a low scoring field goal here and there probably wins this one. Monterey's got the field goal kicker, I think, that can win this game. The next one, George, if you are a fan of running backs, maybe worth the trip, <laughs> Littlefield at Shallow Water. Yeah, and if you want to make that trip, you better get there early because this game's live will be over in about an hour and a half with the way that these two teams run the football. Littlefield, an outstanding job. You know, Devontae Mathis, Demondre Moore about both had outstanding games in their opener uh, against La Mesa. Shallow Water, we mentioned Jarek Black. And, and Wes McCutcheon, I think, really showed the dynamic that they're going to need on offense, you know, both running the football. He had almost 100 yards and throwing the football. He had a touchdown pass as well. So this this is going to be a really close game. It's going to be, you know, which team can kind of in, in, assert itself offensively and, and, and control the tempo of the game. Being at home, I'm going to go with shallow water in this one. I think the Mustangs probably take this one. Seminole at Idaloo, the Wildcats, a big win over last week over yeah. Lubbock Cooper. Yeah, and I think one of the things I, I was uh, pleasantly uh, surprised to see was, was Seminole come out and hand it to what has traditionally been a pretty good Merkle team, 14-7. Uh, to 7. Uh, They came out, ran the ball really well. It's going to be a different Seminole team than what we're used to in the past. They don't have Jacob Birch anymore at quarterback. They're going to be more of a running offense, and, and that really showed in their stats, although they do have the ability to throw the football. But Idaloo, I thought, you know, they've already faced one 3A team in Cooper. They're facing another 3A team. Uh, now at home, and you know, I thought Alex Terran played well at quarterback. They've got Cole Houch in it at, uh, at running back. I want to go with the home team. I think Idaloo goes 2-0 in this one as well. Another game that could be pretty intriguing, you look at Leveland at Denver City. Yeah, both teams uh, with, with solid 1-0 starts. Uh, Leveland uh, beat uh, Roosevelt 26-24 uh, to, to start the season. Denver City just rolled over Stanton 33-7. So two teams that are going to come in with a lot of confidence. It, it's it's going to come down, I, th I think, to the trenches in this one. Denver City is going to throw it around a little bit, probably a little bit more than Leveland is. Leveland is going to play solid defense. I think you know Denver City has probably just got a little bit too much weaponry on offense, and I'm going to go with the Mustangs in this one. Next one, George, a very good post team visiting La Mesa. Yeah, very good post team. You mentioned it, uh, you know, that they came out of the gates and, and picked up where they left off last year as well uh, with a 50 to nothing win. La Mesa, like we said, struggled against uh, against Littlefield in that running game. I don't see how they're not going to struggle against Post and DJ Brown and the weapons they have there. I think Post wins this one going away. Hale Center visits the Sudan team with probably a very bad taste in its mouth after last week. A very bad taste in their mouth, and they're going to have to stop a, a, a dynamic quarterback in Lane Rossi. He's a good runner, good thrower. He doesn't have quite as many uh, top flight weapons on the outside in the receiving cores he did last year, but he's got a lot of solid ones, the, and they had a solid win uh, th this past week to open the season. This, this, is, this game is a little bit of a toss-up to me, but given that, that I think Hale Center is going to ride the little, a little bit of momentum in this one, I'm going to go with the Owls on the road, surprisingly. And our last one before we move on to our game of the week, the city that produced the great Don Williams. <laughs> Tulia visits the New Deal team we spoke about earlier. Well, if they can produce a few more Don Williams, they might have a chance in this one. Uh, you know, I, I say that, but you know, Tulia is, is an up-and-coming team. They've been down a few years, but Tulia is, is on the way uh, back up. But they're going up against a solid New Deal club that just may be, you know, pound for pound, Class 1A to 5A, the most solid all-around team that we have out here on the South Plains. Offensively, defensively, special teams. I think New Deal controls the clock in this one. I think they control it with the running game. I think they have a repeat of last year, maybe, or last week. Maybe not as big a score, but I think they win uh, pretty big in this one. George, on to the big boy, our happy State Bank game of the week. Friendship against the traditional power. 
Oh, Dessa oh, Permian. Permian. Yeah, uh, a big game. There's, there's going to be a lot of hype around this game. I know, uh, you know, Fox Sports Live or Fox Live uh, Football Football Friday Live is going to be out uh, doing their show with this one. Uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of hype, uh, you know, national or, or in the, across the state on this one. And it, it's an interesting uh, game. You know, uh, Friendship went down to Permian, beat them last year, 23-13. But Permian's had some changeover. Blake Felt, a former uh, player, has come back to take over that program. Uh, you know, they're, they're running different offensive and defensive schemes. I don't think they're going to throw anything at Friendship that, th that Friendship hasn't seen. I think Friendship's focus this week has got to be on them and getting that offense going, getting the passing game going, uh, you know, and, and quite honestly getting the running game going. They, you know, they had flashes of brilliance in that game against Canatillo. They just weren't consistent with it. The thing that Friendship, we all know, is going to hang its hat on is defense, and that defense is really going to have to play well against uh, Permian. You know, they run a two-back gun spread. They're going to throw the ball around the field. Uh, Montwood did a good job controlling that game last week, even though Permian got up to about a 14, or had a 14 nothing lead early in the game. Montwood settled down, came back, won that game. Uh, I think Friendship probably does the same. They probably won't get down like that, but I think Friendship controls the game. I think we're probably looking at about a 21-14 game, about like it was last year. I'm going to go with the Tigers. And as always, the Friendship Faithful will probably be out in full force, make a Absolutely. really, really nice atmosphere out there. I know George will be out at that one. Yep. We'll also take a look at Shallow Water and Littlefield up there. We'll also be Lubbock High and Coronado, as well as a variety of other places you can read about online and in the paper the next day. And as always, you know where to go online if you want to read about those things, LoneStarVarsity.com and LubbockOnline.com. That is going to do it, George, for this second episode of the Happy State Bank Football Fever. For George Watson, I'm Zach Long. We'll see you out there Friday.